Welcome to What Are You Sporting About podcast, a podcast about business, employment, sports, and entertainment to help educate, support, and guide you to your next level. Here's your host, Attorney Savania DeBarros. Hi, this is Savania DeBarros, Protector of Athletes, and today I have Mr. J- Kai Taylor on the line. Hi, Jakai. Hi, I'm ha- happy to be on um, on the podcast today. Yes, ma'am. I'm happy yeah. to be on this podcast today. It's actually my first podcast I ever did, first debut, so kind of excited about that. Well, we're excited to have you, and I had to take a pause to say your name. I'm like, I don't want to jack up the name. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so excited that you are here with us. It's um, a very... It's, it's an interesting time for one, and also it's it's awesome to have someone who's transitioning from college athletics into hopefully the pro realm world. So before we dive into some of those things and what what makes you tick, just tell us a little bit about who Jakai is and uh, what you've been doing so far. All right. Uh, so I'm my name is Jakai Taylor. Um, I'm originally from North Chicago, Illinois, but I. Uh, I grew up mostly in Waukegan, Illinois, which is like a, a, the city, like right near, right near it. Um, I just recently graduated from Queens University of Charlotte in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Got my bachelor's of science in sports management, and uh, right now um, I'm working my way uh, to play professional ball. So uh, I know with everything going on in the pandemic and the COVID, it's kind of slowing things down. But you know, I'm still keeping the belief in me and uh, just working every day just to get better. So that's, that's, how life. that's awesome. You know, I'm just going to ask you because uh, with the pandemic, COVID-19, it has caused a lot of people to shift, even athletes and student athletes, finding different ways. And we call it in the business world pivoting. So finding ways to keep yourself relevant. If you currently have a business, finding ways to make sure that you can still serve your current client customer service base. So what have you been doing during this pandemic to keep yourself relevant as an athlete, especially someone who aspires to go pro? I think the main thing, Ben, for me is just to uh, just not just go crazy because, uh, you know, you know, the world isn't the world right now, how it was a couple months ago. And um, just being really, really patient um, and just, you know, hoping that this uh, whole virus thing blows over. Uh, but it, it is necessary that we all take the, the safety precautions that um, they're telling us to. But um, I just I just have to just wake up every day, go to the gym, make sure I get me my good workout in and, you know, stay in shape and just, you know, just keep just keep just keep rolling. You know, I, I know this pandemic is kind of, you know, messing with everybody's head. But I think that the best thing for me to do is just stay focused and just keep working. And, and I'm also taking this time as to like, you know, even learn other things that I, I probably never knew. So, you know, it just putting everything in perspective. Yeah, that's a great answer. And it's so important to keep educating yourself. Like I always, I, I feel like I'm a life learning, lifelong learner because for one, I just love, I love education. I love just diving into different things that I'm like, wow, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know what that was, you know, so yeah. <laughs> that's good because I feel like the more you learn, the more well-rounded you become as a person and yes. more aware that you become also, especially that's something I think of athletes need, period. So yes. um, share with us a little bit about some of your passions as an athlete, um, maybe the, the, a purpose that you have that you want to you want to continue to drive forward um, as you transition? Uh, I'm, I'm really passionate about just growing myself as a, not only as a basketball player, but, you know, as a young man coming up in this world and just, you know, uh, just trying to learn as much as I can and just become a, a, a really well-rounded person, you know, and uh, be a person that um, if a friend needs me, I can be there, um, you know, just, and also be that, be that guy that, like the younger, the younger guys can look up to and uh, they can ask me any questions and, you know, I won't act all Hollywood on them or anything like that. So I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to keep growing as a person and just progressing in life and just keep kind of getting better and learning things. You know, you never, 
you never know everything. So you can always learn something through life. That's true. That's true. You touched on something that's important. So, you know, I, I authored the book, What Are You Sporting About?, um, which really drives home for athletes to really to really find out what their purpose is, which will help them to set guidelines along the way to create sustainable foundations later. And um, one of the things I do discuss is being approachable as an athlete. So you said, I won't go all and act Hollywood on you, <laughs> which is true. Yeah. You know, yeah. you want people to be able to approach you and be able to connect with you um, because sometimes the people that you least expect could possibly be the people that could um, actually implement something very lucrative in your, in your life, you know? So that, that's great advice. Um, let me ask you this though. If there was, if you have a favorite country or team that you aspire to be on, what would it be? I think my favorite team that I would like to be on, it probably would be here at home on the Chicago Bulls. To be honest, okay. Uh, just to, I don't know. Just you know, just to bring that light back to the city, uh, that'll be. That's like uh, that's the dream right there. Just to play play here at home and on the Bulls, and you know, all my family can come watch me and see me. But I mean, we're at, if I can l- be lucky enough to get the opportunity to play anywhere, I'll be very grateful for. It and I'll just you know, I'll give it my all, and it doesn't even matter. Awesome. So if you were able to play with the Chicago Bulls, what would be some advice that you would give to young athletes who are currently in high school or about to begin their college career as a student athlete also aspiring to go to the Bulls? Uh, My advice to them would be um, to first just uh, be a respectful person and just, um, you know, just try to network with a lot of people. Try to meet, you know, non-student athletes that's on campus. Because a lot of times I, I meet a bunch of student athletes in uh, college and, you know, they just – they only talk to their team or, like, you know, they just only talk to athletics. And I was I was really big on in college, you know, trying to speak to everybody, whether you play sports or not, because you never know what that person can be in life. And they may can be somebody that can that can help you, you know. So that would be something I would tell them, you know, just try to meet as many people as you can, make connections, you know, uh, relationships and things like that and, you know, Always, always work hard. You know, uh, if you really want to be the player that you say you want to be, you have to put the work in. Uh, you have to, you know, study the game. And also you have to make sure that your grades are top notch. You know, I was I was the type of student in um, college. I always went above and beyond. Uh, I was like an overachiever. So, you know, I think that was just a pride in me. I just always wanted to do the best I can. And, you know, if I knew I can do the best I can in school, I said, why not, you know, just try to get the best grades possible. So that would be my advice to them. Okay. No, I agree with that. You know, one thing that I've always said is education for me was the one thing that I can control. So why not try to be the best at it? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, why not? You know, so there's um, a huge shift in athletes who are opting out of going to an NCAA school because they want to own, they want to have complete control over their name, image, and likeness, and so they're going to G League, the NBA G League. What What are your thoughts on that? Uh, my thoughts on that, I think, I think that, um, I think that high school high school kids they're they're seeing how the NCAA works and you know how they you know they basically control control the game and you know they're not they're not paying any of the student athletes, but they're making billions of dollars off their name. So. You know, if I'm a high school athlete right now and I'm not feeling ready for the pros, I'm thinking I'll go G. I would go G League myself, because you know, once you get to the NCAA, you know, you could become a big star in the college world, and they'll be making so much money off you, and you probably won't see a penny of it. So, I think they're just you know being smart about it. I think it's a smart move, in my in my opinion. Now let's shift that conversation just a little bit because, you know, name, image, and likeness is definitely at the forefront of everything right now with the college world, college sports. Now, if you were currently going to be transitioning with your to from high school to college with, um, and let's just say you were in Florida because Florida has enacted an NIL statute. 
So let's just say you were transitioning to a Florida school. Would your answer still be the same or would it be different? Uh, my answer, <laughs> my answer would be hesitant, you know, because Florida is a beautiful state. But uh, I think I think it's all about how I would feel at that time about it. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I think as far as right now, I think I guess knowing what I know now about the NCAA and been there and done that, I probably would have, you know, made that jump from high school to probably the NBA G League. Thank you for sharing it, because I know there's a lot of athletes that are in that space now or even going to be thinking about that maybe once NIL is is really on the books nationwide for a while. And they're going to have to make that very strategic decision. Do I go and play for a school or do I go to a G League, you know, to get me ready for um, mainstream pros? So we already know, like, when you go pro, <laughs> well, first off, <laughs> even when you become a student athlete, and especially at an NCAA school, there is a particular stigma that is placed on you. People just think that you think you are all of that because especially if you're with the D1 school, oh, it's a lot, right? So Yeah, yeah. Oh, tr- tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so just imagine becoming a professional athlete and walking around with this target on your back is – being a cocky person, right? You can have a, a heart of gold, but this the stereotype is out there. So what are some things that aspiring athletes, and we can even just say current um, pro athletes, what, in your opinion, can they do off the court to eliminate that stigma of being cocky or too good, quote unquote, unquote, to talk with other non-athletes. I think I think the best thing for them to do is you know, you know, off the court you have to you have to connect with with other people that's you know non-student athletes. You have to speak to them when you see them on campus, or if you have a a, a student that's in your class and you know you have class with them, you see them around the campus, talk to them, have a conversation with them. You know, those. Like, having those type of conversations with those people who just, they don't play sports, you know, they're probably still trying to find a purpose in life. That that goes a long way with them. I know many people I have, you know, spoke to throughout college, they still remember me for that. And, you know, they they they, they love me for who I am because, you know, I don't try to act too good or, like, I'm too good to speak to them because it's like, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a regular person like you too. You know, I still, you know, I still got to wake up, and put my pants on the same, just like you. So what makes me better than you? You know, of course, I'm, you know, I'm on scholarship or, you know, my, my college is paid for, but, you know, I, I won't, I can't act too good. You know, I had to work for it. You know, th- those students are still working, you know, to bust their butts in class and, you know, to some of those kids have to maintain the GPA just to even stay in that school. So it's like, you know, it's just all about connecting with them and speaking to them and, you know, you got to warm them up. You just don't, you don't, don't come around and just don't say nothing and look at them all weird and funny. You know, they're, they're people just like you too, you know? So you just have to connect with them and speak to them. Yeah, that is so, so true. That's so true. I mean, you just never know. I, I call these people like walking angels, you know, sometimes yeah. you just never know who, the way you treat certain people, you never know what, value and goodness and blessings they will impart in your life yes yeah i'm a i'm a big believer in you know you treat people how you want to be treated and i think that's what makes me you know a person that people like to be around and you know they feel like they can talk to me anytime during the day because you know i won't i won't i won't act like a big time on them it just it just it's not it's not my personality and i don't think it ever been in me to act that type of way to those people well, I definitely appreciate you for being open and honest and humble. And I know humility is is a character trait that a lot of people lack. But I do know if if it's something that a person can, you know, <laughs> hopefully it can be taught. But, yeah. um, you know, humility is one of those things. If, if you got it, man, you know, people are always going to want to help you because you are you 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 are approachable and you yeah. are, you don't have so much pride that people just have to keep knocking down walls just to try to, to impart something on you. So 
um, yes. close to you Kai, for you know even getting to the point where you are now i'm super excited for you and Thank i you. i can just pray that you know all of your dreams that you want come into fruition and you are able to achieve everything that you put your mind to so thank you thank you again thank you so much for coming on the podcast hopefully i'll be uh you know interviewing you as a bulls player yes hey i'll i'll be down for it i'll be down for it it'll be <laughs> it, it'll be it'll be a second go around it'll be it'll be fun so yeah i'll be down for it yeah absolutely well thank you so much again and um we'll talk with you soon yes thank you for having me on i hope you have a great day and everyone else has a great day too and just keep following your dreams and stay focused absolutely thank you bye sure, thank you bye bye thanks for joining us this week on what are you sporting about podcast make sure to visit our website prosportlawyer.com where you can subscribe to the show in itunes stitcher or whatever your favorite platform is so you'll never miss a show and while you're at it if you found value in the show we'd appreciate a rating on itunes or iHeartRadio. or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show that would help us out too if you like the show you might want to check out our book what are you sporting about attorney savania debarros is available for private consulting at sldebarros.com and remember we're here to educate support and guide you in your journey to success because we're all sporting about something